everyone. Happy Saturday. Um, I will wait a few seconds to see if anyone hop, hops on. Um, I want to warn you, I am exhausted. It's been a really long week, so um, I'll do my best. But if I lose my train of thought, that's why. <laughs> um, I am... I do have slides, so if it helps you guys, um, if you want to look back on this stuff, um, I'd be happy to send you the slides um, if, you know, you want something to reference. Um, I'm also probably going to make up, like, a document of all these coping skills that we're going to talk about today, so um, I will let you guys know when that's ready, um, and then you have that to reference. Um, because these are really, really important coping skills, so um, I'll kind of lay out what they are and how you can use them and why they're beneficial. Um, so, and with that document, you'll be able to reference it and know, like, oh, I need this coping skill now, I could really use this, so it'll kind of explain, um, like, how to use it too. Which I will explain today, but um, I just want you guys to have something that you can look back on and um, use. So, um, we're going to get started. So, like I said, we're talking about coping skills today. Um, these five coping skills are the coping skills I recommend most for, um, people on their self-love journey. So, these are things that will really help you on your journey. Um, self-love journeys are never easy, um, we know that, and loving ourselves isn't always easy, but these skills can help along the way to um, kind of ease that and help you to love yourself ultimately. Um, so if you don't know what coping skills are, coping skills are used um, to ease distress or difficult emotions. So when you're really having a difficult time, um, whether it's in a relationship or at work or just with yourself um, and the feelings you have about yourself, um, coping skills can help ease those emotions and situations. Um, they're used, like I said, during stressful situations or, and or emotions. Um, so when you're under a lot of stress, these are great things to use. So let's jump right in. Coping skill number one, stop. This is literally called the stop skill. Um, this is where, it might sound kind of weird at first. Like when I first heard it, I was like, does that really work? It sounds kind of weird. But you literally tell your thoughts to stop. And this stops your brain from repeating negative thoughts um, or, you know, detrimental thoughts. So... Um, you literally yell stop in your head. If you yelled it out loud, that'd be a little weird, but you could. Um, but for sure, yell it in your head, and this will stop negative or unwanted thoughts. Um, and with time, those thoughts will be replaced with positive thoughts. And at first, you have to kind of intentionally replace them. Like when you stop the unwanted thoughts, tell yourself something positive. And over time, your brain will automatically create those positive thoughts. So, coping skill number one, stop skill. Coping skill number two, um, this one, personally, I think is really hard. Um, be assertive and say no. Saying no is a coping skill. Um, it's really hard for a lot of people, but saying no is so, so beneficial to taking care of yourself. So, you have to do what you need to do and don't apologize. There's nothing wrong with saying no. As hard as it is sometimes, we a lot of times feel guilty for saying no, but there's nothing wrong with it. So, tell others how you feel, take actions that you need to, and say no if you need to. So, here's how you use it. Repeat after me. No. Just say no. Um, I know, I know it's hard, but um, in order to ease stress and take care of yourself, sometimes we just have to say no. And sometimes we have to say no 
to people who are really meaning well and you know you want to say yes but you just can't and um, sometimes we just have to do that we can't be everything to everyone um, sometimes you just have to take care of yourself so coping seal number two is be assertive and say no um, coping skill number three this one is one that I push all the time um, and that is exercise the reason that I push it all the time is because moving your body makes you feel good. So when you feel good, it's easier to take care of yourself and love yourself um, and show yourself grace and so many other things um, because you feel good. So um, this could look like walking, running, weightlifting, biking, yoga, dancing. There are so many options. Um, personally, I do at-home workouts. If you need more guidance with finding what's right for you, um, reach out to me. I'd love to help you get set up with something that works for you and that you enjoy. Um, but whatever it is, moving your body is so, so important. And when you move your body, endorphins are released and that is what makes you feel good. So when you feel good, you're less stressed and you feel better in yourself and your body. Um, so that is why this one is so, so important. Coping skill number four, um, calming techniques. So there are a lot of calming techniques. Um, three that I recommend most are deep breathing. Most people either know how to do this or there are tons of deep breathing exercises on YouTube. Um, also progressive muscle relaxation. This is where you squeeze your muscles for like five seconds and then let them go for about five seconds. Um, and this just releases stress and tension in your body. And also grounding techniques. So this is using your five senses to kind of ground yourself and bring yourself to the present. Um, take yourself out of your mind, um, out of the negative thoughts and everything, um, and just ground yourself in the moment. So these techniques, as well as so many others, can train your mind and body to become more relaxed. Um, and coping skill number five, last but not least, is affirmations. So um, I know we've talked about this before in this group. If you missed the video, um, go back and watch it because this one is really beneficial. Um, affirmations. So affirmations are saying or thinking positive statements. It's super simple. And at first you might not believe them, but over time it'll create more positive thoughts and positive thoughts about yourself. So here's what you do. Um, search or think of positive statements to say to yourself. So, I am good enough. I um, am worthy. I am beautiful. It can be lots of different things. Um, and write them down and post them in places where you see them often. So I have a bunch of them posted on my um, dresser mirror. You can put them in your bathroom, in your car, on your desk. They can go all kinds of different places just to remind you um, of these statements and create these thoughts in your mind. So over time, the positive thoughts will replace the negative thoughts. Um, the important thing to remember with these skills is that practice makes perfect. So um, the only way to really be effective in these skills is to practice them and repeat them until they're effective. So the first time you use them, maybe it won't be super effective. Um, things like exercise, if you exercise one time and then give it up, like you probably won't see much of a difference. Um, but consistently practicing it over time, you will feel so good. Um, so these are five of the my most recommended skills on your self-love journey. I hope this was helpful. Um, I hope these skills were helpful 
and like I said I will get you guys that sheet of these skills um, but if you need more support um, that is what my learning to love yourself course is for um, I give you all of this and way more so it's a six-week course um, you have the option to add on coaching so I coach you through the course um, weekly check-ins group coaching sessions worksheets to process what you're learning um, tech support a private Facebook community um, so much more so much more support on your journey and just really growing in this journey so if that sounds like something that would be helpful for you let's talk and chat about um, how we can help you on your self-love journey so um, that's all I have for you guys today. I hope you have a great Saturday and I will talk to you soon.